Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, I don't have a dream this morning to share, but I just wanted to share a word of encouragement um, out of the books of Acts, um, of being filled and baptized by the Holy Spirit, and the book of Revelation, of being an overcomer. And um, they both are tied to each other because you can't be an overcomer if you're not filled with the Holy Spirit of God and baptized by the Spirit of God. I don't care what uh, a denomination or doc doctrine that you've been believing, but um, the power to live for God, to live for Christ, to live in Christ is only by His Spirit that He has given to His disciples. So I want to get started right away. Um, this is one of my very um, high topic of interest and passion. Um, I've been a born again Christian for about 17 years now and I have stumbled um, many times. I've ran away from God a couple times um, because I wasn't sure of uh, how good he really was and if he was um, anything like um, his leaders and his people and I told him if you were anything like your people as far as um, manipulative, judgmental, controlling, mean-spirited, um, I would not serve him and I did tell him that um, about seven, eight years ago and I praise him that he did not strike me dead um, but in his loving kindness he allowed me to go my way because we have free will to choose. Um, we have free will to choose, but we do not have control over the consequences. And um, I took some time off and um, went seeking for the truth. And, um, and the truth is, he is awesome. He is holy. He is righteous. He is compassionate. He is merciful. He's just, he's faithful, he's true. He is not like us. He is not like man that he that he should lie. He is true to his promises and he has been more than gracious to me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Well, let me get right into it because I don't want to drag this out. I'm reading from Acts chapter 1. When the Lord Jesus spoke to his disciple, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And then verse 8, Jesus says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. For the last 17 years, I have gone through so many uh, churches, because I move a lot, um, moved at least 30 plus times in my life. So uh, because of that, I've you know, been in many churches, many different denominations, and I've seen a lot of leaders and Christians, teachers and preachers that um, has doctrine uh, from various denominations, but very few that was in fact filled, baptized by the Holy Spirit, endued with power by the Holy Spirit. They were gifted teachers, many of them, but they seemingly lack, and I want to be careful how I say this, this is just based on my, my observation, and the Holy Spirit can, will and um, has, um, you know, convicted me on, you know, my thoughts and feelings on this, and He will continue um, to guide me and correct me on this, but I'm just going to speak my thoughts. And that is that I, I've seen a lot of empty religion, lifeless religion, doctrine, theology that has no power of the living God, the resurrected Christ that lives 
in the body of Christ that lives in his true born again believers. And I'm not speaking from theology. I'm speaking from real life. You see, for once upon a time before my um, born again experience, I was completely in bondage to the power of sin. I was bound to um, destructive um, relationship and behaviors and, and thoughts and attitudes and emotions um, filled with uh, rage and anger and bitterness um, because of all that had happened to me, um, the tragedies and the traumas in my childhood from the genocide, you know, the killing fields of Cambodia where two millions of my people were destroyed and I lost my precious uh, father and separated from my mother, I lost my identity, um, my homeland. Um, I was stripped to nothing and um, experienced so much pain the type of pain that gave you knots in your belly. I don't know if you know what type of pain I'm talking about, but I used to be tormented in grief, stricken with sorrow. And um, so I was oppressed most of my life with depression and um, misery and loneliness and the feeling of aband abandonment and being lost. Then I turned, into, uh, I turned to drugs and alcohol and various... Um, destructive ways to comfort myself to escape the pain of my existence and I tried to take my own life um, by the time I was in my late 25 uh, years of age um, I tried to end my life um, with a, a pair of old razor and um, in the midst of my suicide um, the Lord spoke these words to me hell is real and you don't want to go there at first, I wasn't sure if it was my own thoughts or conscience, so I continued trying to um, uh, slice my wrist. And um, then once again, the voice said, hell is real and you don't want to go there. So I put the razor down and cried out to God and then I just cried out to him in the shower and I said, God, I don't know who you are. I don't care who you are. You can't be a good God to let me go through all these pain and misery all of my life. I don't want to live anymore. Just please, please let me die. And that was the cry of my heart when I was um, 25. And then two weeks later, through two weeks of dreams, um, consecutive dreams and visions of my soon destruction um, that was coming if I continued to head uh, down the same path of rebellion and, and sinfulness um, and wickedness that I committed against him and my own body. Um, he appeared to me in the form of glorious light and called me to himself. He said, there are two roads in life. There's um, blessings and curses. That's out of Deuteronomy. And then he said, choose life. And then he went on to say, the thief comes not but to kill, steal and destroy, but I have come to give you life and life more abundantly come to me I will give you the kind of life that you dreamed of Lakina do you know that God calls us by name he does I don't care what anybody says he calls me by name because he knows my heart he created me I'm his child he knitted me in my mother's womb so he knows me so anyways he said come to me and the only kind of life I wanted was to be loved, accepted unconditionally, and not kicked out when I misbehaved. And to belong. I wanted to belong to a family. I wanted to belong to somebody. I was so tired and in so much pain and misery just from being lonely, drifting from globe to globe and state to state, country to country, home to home just never belonging to anything or anyone just drifting in loneliness so anyways um i ran to him i ran into his loving arms and he filled me with his spirit and i was born again that september 1998 um and i began for the first time to worship god my Redeemer, my Healer, my Father, my Savior, 
in spirit and in truth, I lifted my arms toward heaven and I cried and shouted my loudest shout ever. I screamed, hallelujah, hallelujah. I praise you, God. I praise you. I praise you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. So I was set free in his presence from the power of um, addictions, addictions to drugs and alcohol. I did, um, went back to it um, in various seasons of my life a couple times when I was lost, but um, the Holy Spirit would not allow me to stay in the pit very long because he's faithful and true. And um, he never gave up on, on me. So I want to talk about overcoming. I'm going to pause this video for now because it's past 10 minutes and it will take forever to download it. So I will pick it up in just a moment in a different video. Thank you.